Hey y'all, welcome back. Stitch with me number 14, I believe. And today I am working on Dragonkin. She's who I chose to capture a villain. Depending on which way this goes up. I'm pretty sure the um, floss tube will go up first. So then it'll make sense. If not, it'll make sense when the floss tube video goes up. So watch for that. Anyways, my name is Amy. And welcome to my world of crazy. Let me grab a needle here. And hopefully lighting is good, I think. Do I need my overhead light? I might. Let me just go ahead and turn that on now. Close your eyes for just a moment. And hopefully that helps. We shall see. Okay. So last week we talked about how I stitch, how I do my X's, and I worked out where... I shouldn't say worked out. I lucked out that the area that I was stitching in was just blocking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This one, however, is not going to be like that. So we're going to see how I actually jump around and how I fill in colors and how I waste floss because mm, with my haids, I jump a lot. So for those who are very, very frugal with their floss, I apologize in advance because when it comes to my haids, I'm not very frugal. I'm pretty, uh, mm, there's no limit to how many boxes I will jump. Let's just put it that way. So I hope everyone has had a fantastic week. We're, we are starting vacations. So the husband is on vacation for a week. The kids are now on fall break for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Mental status is dropping per usual, but it's fine. Everything's fine. I have massive plans for this week. Hopefully Mr. Gidge, the hubster, will uh, help me implement the plan that I have in place because I would like to start making some bags. Now, I say bags as in plural, but the idea that I have in my head, which is, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Um, and I don't want to say it out loud because, you know, when you say stuff out loud, for some reason, all of a sudden everyone else has the exact same idea as you. And not that that's a bad thing, but I don't, I don't want to be scared off and not do it because, well, somebody does it better. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Um, in case you're new to my Stitch With Me's, please understand these are pretty random. They're very rambly. And I have no idea what I'm talking about because five minutes ago, I have no idea what I said. I'm lucky I made it 30 seconds ago and that I knew my name. There's that. I always say that I'm going to pull a tag and I always seem to forget. <sighs> Which always makes me nervous because then I wonder what the heck I'm going to talk about throughout the entire stitch with me. And then an entire, you know, 45 minutes to an hour goes by and I've literally talked the entire time not knowing what I've just said. So there's that. Um, what do we have? Do we have anything going on this week? I don't think so. The husband is watching football. And hence the, let me just hold those up there for just a minute. Whoa, thread. Let me just hold those there for a minute because maybe you'll be able to see them and Linda will be able to focus just a hair bit more on them. I have my football colors on this week. We are Packer fans, so green and gold. I have my referee stripes. I have my football. I have my helmet and I have my heart. Will Linda focus? Maybe. There we go. Love football. Okay. So I'm not, I'm not a massive paint my face crazy type of fan. I am, however, the type of fan that believes if it works, don't judge it. I do not watch the games unless it's the playoffs. I know that sounds really bad, but for some reason, every time I watch a game, they lose. And it's only weird if it doesn't work, right? I didn't watch the first game. I didn't watch today's game. They won both. Ta-da! It's only weird if it doesn't work. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So the, it's amazing how the boys all of a sudden interested in all things football. I think it's because he was grounded from video games. So he's not allowed to play video games. So now he's downstairs enjoying some daddy sun time watching football because he doesn't have the video games. Isn't that, isn't that just weird how that works? So weird. My other kid, Scarlett, is in her room cleaning. Hopefully she gets very distracted very easily. And both my kids are like mini tornadoes. So trying to get them to clean a room is like 
literally mission impossible but it's all good they'll get there they have two whole weeks two whole weeks you know of being sheer boredom and then when they get back actually they will be quote unquote no longer enrolled in the school that they are in and they will be registered as online what do they call it virtual academy something or other i don't know so they're going to do that for the quarter, hopefully, fingers crossed, come January, after all of the major holidays. Uh, things will have, you know, calmed down, and we've taken a turn for the best, I hope. And my kids will be able to go back to physical school. Not that I actually mind them being home. It's kind of weird. It started out being a mental issue. Like, having my brain constantly be on the on switch, if that makes any sense at all. Um was like just completely draining me but I went through my little rut and I'm back now and I think I am mentally prepared and a-okay health wise mentally it physically is a whole other question I'm gonna flip this and hope that you can't see my pattern okay um, and I think I kind of I'm kind of enjoying them being at home I, I don't like being the teacher don't Please don't take that the wrong way. I, to all the teachers out there, I give you a lot of credit and a lot of kudos, even more so than before, because this year has just been, where did my little bucket go? There it is. Um, it's just been insane. It's, I think it's been a test for all of us, really. Children, students, and adults, all involved, have been uh, tested to our maxes, I think, and we're hopefully all still pulling through and doing okay and hanging in there. Like, I feel like everyone, you know that famous poster where the cat is hanging on the tree and it's like, hey, hang in there? Yeah, I feel like we all need one of those right now. And just, like, in our face remind us that, hey, we need, we need to just keep hanging in there and allow the fact and give ourselves some grace that some days are going to be better than others and on the days where they're not so hot we just need to take a deep breath and if doing the bare minimum which means getting out of bed is all you can do that day then you know what that's all you can do that day and it's 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 going to be fine the biggest thing I tell people especially like my family members who are who are going through with through things oh geez Louise words are hard I just got through doing a floss tube um, is we're all allowed to have crap days and we're all allowed to have pity parties. The biggest thing is we're not allowed to unpack and stay there. That's, that's constantly what I'm telling people who, uh, who I chit chat with. And, um, I think it's true. I think, I think we all need to have, you know, days where we're just kind of like blah or I just literally the only thing I can do is get out of bed and be okay with it. Just as long as we don't do it every day. Don't unpack and stay there. That's the key thing. How do we even get onto this topic? What the heck were we just talking about? Kids going to school. Wow, that was a... Sometimes, sometimes it's a lot harder to be me than I think it is. But, you know. So. Man, I kind of wish I printed it out to tag. Because this week was pretty, pretty boring. Although, I do have to say, today is Sunday. In case I didn't mention that already. Um... I think the game plan is, is we're going to upload Stitch With Me's on Wednesdays. So I probably won't say the day every week just because I don't want you to, I don't know. It feels weird to say that I'm recording it on Sunday, but I'm not putting it up until Wednesday because we all know when the comments start coming in, I have to go back and watch what the heck I was talking about because I don't know what I just said. So um, it's, it's a little confusing, but it's okay. I was going somewhere with that. Mm-hmm. What was I? Oh, yeah. I think we were talking about I should have done a tag, but that's okay. We decided, because, you know, everybody's on vacation, we were in complete vacation mode yesterday, that we were just going to lounge on the couch, eat some popcorn, have some theater candy, and do absolutely nothing but binge watch the last three Harry Potters. Yeah, so that happened. Movie six... Movie 7, Movie 8. Um, so, I have a pattern <laughs> in my pattern keeper of Snape. And let me just tell you, 
while watching these movies, I was like, I'm not doing that. I am not, no, mm -mm, I'm not stitching him. And of course, in the last movie, I'm like, oh, I have to stitch Snape. I have... I have to. So he's been added to the list. He's another full cross or full coverage freaking pattern that I'm going to add in, add in next year. I'm, I'm, I'm totally going to stitch it. I don't know why I ever doubted it. I, I don't know why. But there's that. So now my youngest one, Scarlet, is completely obsessed with everything Harry Potter. She's gone back and watched like all of them. The deal was because we, the husband went through and bought them all like, I guess, digitally or something. I don't know. Um, he went through and he bought them all so she can watch them on her TV. And we told her the deal was is that she could not watch the ones we haven't watched together yet. She could watch all of them up to that point. Well, now we've watched them all. And I'm 95% sure she's watched one through five at least twice each. Obsession. Yeah. So Harry Potter patterns are definitely in the mix because earlier this year when I had planned out the fact that I was going to be, you know, crazy and do a gazillion in one starts, most of them being BAPs. Um, I think I only had intended to do one, one Harry Potter. And I honestly think I'm going to UFO, mm, I hate saying this, but it's true. I think I'm going to UFO the um, Soya Citrone Adventure. I just don't think it's my thing. I'm, I'm, I feel I'm too way too far behind first off like it's almost done at this point and everybody's changing all the things and I'm like oh I want to do this no I want to do that I want to do this one I want to do that one and I'm like all confused and confuzzled and I'm just like you know what I think I'm just gonna drop it and it's gonna be okay everything's gonna be fine I will frog out what I've already started which is not too too much I did the castle and I did the um the train worst comes to worst if Scarlet really wants that piece I'll just chop that off and maybe like make it into a bookmark for her I don't know or small pillow. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. That's tomorrow's problem. But Clouds Factory has this one that's like a beastie. Like it's massive. Okay. If you've ever gone to Clouds Factory, um, I think one of the ones that is the most popular is the Epic Storybook Princess. Uh, I, that is also in my, my lineup of things to do. I already have a yard of fabric for it by Brandy B. Stitch Me. But I think I'm going to add the Harry Potter one to my wish list. I know, I know. I just heard you guys go, oh gosh, another one? Another one. Really? I know. I know. But I feel like it's a must. So here's the deal. Here's the, here's the whole thing. Whole kit and caboodle. I did no new starts this year. And back in March, you know, when the world just just went crazy right everyone started all now see here here's where I'm gonna jump I'm here and I'm jumping all the way over here do not panic everything is fine I know somebody's gonna yell at me for that and it's okay it's okay um everyone was starting all the things which is the reason why they are doing a hey let's not do any new starts next year let's uh let's kind of focus on the things we've already started this year because this year just went you know buck wild crazy um i stuck to it i almost broke oh man i almost broke i almost started the once upon a fairy tale i was so close so close and then everybody started magic study and i was like oh but i have that one too and i want to be part of the cool kids and i want to do it too and i was like no 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 i'm gonna stand strong i'm staying strong i got this and here we are september 20th i have not started a single new project and i am super proud to say that i have not started a single new project so next, so this year was kind of my, hey, I'm going to go crazy and I'm going to splurge and spend all the things because, well, we're not going out anymore. We're not going out to eat as much as we used to. I mean, there's still some fast food and some pizza nights. Don't get me wrong. But we used to go out every Friday and we would go and we would shop and, you know, grocery shop and have dinner and all the things. And we weren't, we're not doing that, obviously. So the hubby got some new woodwork tools because he wants to learn how to do woodwork and I in turn got a boatload of fabric and patterns and more fabric and flosses and all the things with all the things that go with things right so this was our year to kind of splurge next year it's time to put all of our splurging to use 
So the husband has bought some wood and he wants to make these, um, I don't know, I don't know what to call them, but they're like the, the heads of a guitar. And there was one at Hobby Lobby. I don't know if the hubby can insert a photo, maybe somewhere if he still has it, but it's like the head of the guitar and there's little like quotes on there. And the one we found at Hobby Lobby was, um, love is all you need. I think, um, why do I feel like this is not right? Where am I at? Hello. Where am I? I stitched this, but I feel like this is in the wrong spot. Mm hmm So, where did I jump in for those two? Oh, because I am in the wrong spot. That goes there. This goes here. This goes here. No, I'm in the right spot. I was looking in the wrong spot. Okay, that works. Um, all you need is love, I think. I think was the quote on it, on the thing that we saw at the Hobby Lot. Anyways, the husband wants to learn how to do those. He wants to learn how to make them. So, that's going to be his hobby time and his hobby thing and that's freaking awesome because if he can learn how to do it that would be amazing we would never have to look for another deco piece again I guess I mean one that's made out of wood obviously we're not doing like metal and all that stuff but so next year is my year to do all the things that I've, I've purchased and splurged on and start working on them so yeah I'm I'm probably up to like 150 freaking new starts between all the magazines and the heads and the oy, oy, oy. but it's fine it's fine I'm totally naive enough to believe that I will finish all of these in my lifetime and if a little girl wants to have a dream let her have it let her have it I'm just saying because I, I understand that I'm well well beyond life expectancy but I also get a, a lot of stitches in so for mania well that didn't go where I wanted it to go back up try again let's try over here thanks um, so this year for Mania, I did a stitch count Mania and sorry, just highlighting. Um, my goal was to do a thousand stitches per day and I was pumped for that and was able to accomplish it and am still pretty proud of myself for accomplishing that. And so, oh, I went too far. Where was the last one? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Where did you come in? Oh, I missed it. Okay. So, you know what? It's kind of nice that I'm stitching with you guys right now because my number is at zero. So I'll know exactly how many stitches I did in the stitch with me. But, yep, train of thought. Whoop, gone. What were we talking about? Starting all the things. Stitch count. Oh, stitch count mania. So, this year I did a stitch count. Listen, Linda, listen. Okay. And I was able to accomplish a thousand stitches or more per day. I'm still planning on doing that for Mania this coming year. I'm not only going to do a BAP start all the big old projects that you have. I'm also going to aim for a thousand stitches per new start. Will I get there? I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not as confident that I'll get there this year or next year as I was this year. Because this year everything was already started. It was all going. All the things. Uh, next year, it might be a little bit more of a struggle because I am starting off fresh. I also think that it'll be easy to accomplish because chances are with a lot of the haids that I'm working on, in case you haven't noticed, a lot of them are 310. So knocking out a thousand stitches straight in 310 might not be so hard. I don't know. I'm not 100% sold on that, but I think I can do it. That's, that's the whole goal there. I think I can do it. So new start every day for May and a thousand stitches per day in May is, is the game plan. I brought that up because somebody asked me about it and I forgot who it was. Wondering if I had an actual game plan for all the new starts. So I think four of my four, five. Don't know. Doesn't matter. We'll discuss that when the time comes. Um, but I have, I think, four or five that I have I have actually set in stone. This is the day that I'm going to work on them. So for one of them, which is um, Once Upon a Fairy Tale, obviously, is my first. My January um, new start. New year new start. That's the word I was looking for. Um, and then Tiki Beach Sunset, which was gifted to me by Amanda, 
will be, and Once Upon a Fairy Tale was gifted to me by Anna, A-N-A, right? Aunt, is it Anna or Anna? I always say Anna because I don't know. Anyways, um, so those were both gifts to me. So I want to get them started pretty early and they're both really significant to me. So Once Upon a Fairy Tale, January New Start, and um, Tiki Beach Sunset is going to be mine and my husband's wedding anniversary. So that'll be on April 7th because we went to Hawaii for our honeymoon and it was super awesome. I kind of want to go back. There's no I kind of. I want to. I, I would love to go back. I'd love to get a few more days in where we could actually see the beach and go walk. And it was just, oh, it was so beautiful. And then what else is there? I think I chose Baby Yoda for my husband's birthday, which is March 4th. And I think I have Star Wars All Characters on my daughter's birthday, which is May 4th, because, you know, May the 4th be with you. It's kind of a thing. Um, I have Anne Frank scheduled for June 12th. I just dropped something on my leg. And that was floss. I probably need that. Let's not, uh... Oh. Please hold. Sorry. Losing floss is a bad idea. Um... I believe it was June 12th. Is it June 12th for Anne Frank's birthday? Anyways, I bought the pattern for Anne Frank. I'm starting it on her birthday. And because I think that's so cool. I've never done that before where everyone's like, oh yeah, you do it because it's so-and-so's birthday and you tie it in. And I'm like, that's a fantastic idea. I'm going to do that with Anne Frank. So there's that one. And then, um, is that all of them? I feel like I'm forgetting one. I feel like I'm forgetting one. I think the Avenger ones, I'm the Avenger one that my son chose out, I'm going to do in Mania. But if I, for some reason, have one too many for Mania, then I will bump it out and do it on his birthday, which is September 4th. Yes, everyone is born on a 4th. March 4th, May 4th, September 4th, and I'm August 24th. So there's that. Numbers are, are a thing. They're just, you know weird. Okay, let me see. Highlight there, highlight there, go there. I'm going to jump. Why do I feel like I already did this? Where is this? Da, da, da. That one, that one, that one. Nope, stitch this one. Sometimes, just sometimes, my eyes like to play tricks on me, and then I miss a stitch because I think I did it, and then I didn't do it, but then I think I didn't do it, and then I redo it, and it's all wrong. It's fine. Eyes playing tricks. It's all good. I'm usually right on top of my stitching, so hopefully I'm still in frame. Am I in frame? Okay, good. Whew. I don't know why I always think to check that after I've already like done a gazillion stitches. It doesn't make any sense to me, but it's fine. Um, I need to come down here and go this way, but I think I'm going to go this way and zigzag back up that way. Yeah. Again, this is where this pattern has a lot of the checkerboard. Like, I'm sure you can see that. It's just alternating stitches constantly which kind of drives me a little batty because then I lose my spot a lot and it slows me down but it's all good nope don't highlight that one didn't do that one and this one goes here so I hope you guys are stitching with me and if you are tell me what y'all are working on that one that one this one and I love the fact that, because I, you know, when I get comments, I do my best and I try my best to respond um, right away if I can. And so I try my best to stay on top of my comments and, you know, keep that dialogue going. And I just think it's so awesome how I've had a few people go, you know, you don't really stitch what I stitch, but I still, you know, like hanging out with you. And that is the best freaking part. We can all be stitching on totally different projects because we all have totally different tastes and the fact that we're all still stitching together is all that matters at the end of the day. That's all that matters. It's, it's needle and thread and fabric. And it's fantastic. Because I watch a boatload of people because I obviously have a, a thing for full coverage. And so Although I'm coming across more and more people who do full coverage, I don't know very many who do nothing but full coverage. And I can't say that I do nothing but full coverage. 
but come next year, 90% of uh, what I do will be full coverage. <laughs> Let's just, yes. I am a little, a little nervous about it. I am, but I am super freaking pumped to do it. So don't let my little bits of nerves here and there freak anyone out. I promise you, I'm super pumped. I'm so freaking ready. Mentally, I'm ready. Physically, not so much. I have a lot of fabric to measure out and a lot of fabric to mm, cut and surge and all the things, and project bags to make for all the things. I have an idea going for a project bag that I would like to make. Did I discuss that here or was that in the floss tube? Oh, this is the negative of, of doing videos back to back because I don't remember now. It doesn't matter. I have a, 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 a brain child that's just... It's been haunting me for weeks, for weeks. And I'm not a sewist, so I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm literally gonna pull this out of thin air and it's either gonna work or it's not and I'm gonna have to tweak stuff. But I've had this idea in my head and it's literally like taunting me, taunting me. I've literally stayed up in the middle of the night just either waking up or can't fall asleep because all I can think about is stupid project that I wanna do that I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna accomplish, but. This is the week that I'm going to work on it. I told myself when everybody's on vacation and hopefully I don't have, you know, the mom, 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 mom 50,000 times a day with a gazillion different questions that I don't know how to answer because I don't math. Um, hopefully I can sit down and focus on it because I really want to see if I can do it. And if I can, I will share with you what it was. And if I can't, you will never know. I'm just kidding. I'll totally tell you, even if I totally botch it. I'll let you guys know what it is. Where are we at? Oh wow, only 26 minutes. Hmm, kind of impressed with myself. I mean, I don't feel like I got much stitching done, but I felt like I'd been gabbing on for an hour already. What else is going on? Kids are on vacay, the hubby's on vacay, which means I, in turn, am on vacay. It's a nice staycation, which is okay, because we're typically used to doing those anyway. And it's awfully quiet, so I'm guessing the football game is either not interesting, or our favorite team is not playing. As in, you know, because my husband watches all football games. And he typically has one team that he's rooting for. We already played. We won. It was not the Vikings this week. Who did we play this week? Mm -mm -mm. I'm a bad fan. I don't remember. He told me. I already forgot. I have my Packer nails on. That, that, that's what was I, I was focusing on. It's fine. I'm rather curious if they're gonna are they gonna throw in extra games this season because they they started late. I don't know. See, and this is where my stitching gets all weird and wonky, and I just literally go back and forth, back and forth, jump around. There's no literal rhyme or reason because what you're hearing falling out of my mouth is literally what's happening in my brain, and that happens when I'm stitching constantly. <laughs> There's never a single complete thought, and. So I, I try not to overwhelm myself with being perfect with my stitching. I think I mentioned that last time in my Stitch With Me. I just go where I feel like I need to go, and I just do what I feel like I want to do. I try not to panic about it. It's a beautiful hobby. It is a fun hobby, and I don't ever want to feel stressed out about this hobby. Ever. And I don't think anybody should. I mean, unless you're doing it for a living. Like, I, I can understand being stressed out. This was, if this was what you were depending on to make a living, then by all means and by all rights, stress away. But if you're doing this for a hobby, this should just be relaxing and fun and chill time. And I don't want to have to think that hard. Sometimes I have to think a lot harder than I think I should because I overanalyze things and I make it way more difficult than it needs to be. Especially with these checkerboard patterns. It's so worth the end effect. So it's all good. It's kind of like backstitching. I'm not a big fan of backstitching. I don't like it. It doesn't like me. But the end result is totally worth it. And I'm going to go up here because I need to go down. And go here. Well, don't highlight that one. I am using Pattern Keeper just in case. Oh, and because I'm a jerk and I never remember to say these things, this is on 18 count Ada, and I'm doing two over one full cross. I'm starting to get those questions off an awful lot, and I'm not in the practice of saying what I'm doing. So hopefully I can try to remember. 
to say that more in the beginning, because I know I'm pretty sure I've lost a few people by now. Quite a few, but that's all right. That is all right. I have to say I'm super excited. I've had quite a few new uh, jumps in numbers for subscribers. So if you're new, welcome. I should have said that also in the beginning. Mm, I'll get better at this. I say that now, I probably won't. I kind of feel like I just lied to y'all. If you know me, you know that. Um, but yeah, I've had a huge jump in subscribers. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I know I've had a few people shout me out, like Annie Joyfield Stitcher. I know Dizzy Stitcher, Darren just shouted me out. Super nice shout outs. I so appreciate them. And uh, yeah, so welcome. Welcome, welcome. Because this is uh, this is literally my world of crazy. I call that, I call it that because it's just the truth. This is my world of organized chaos that is literally just it's crazy what I think I can get done because you know oh mother dragon I started this in 2018 she'll be done in a year or two right no no it could have happened had I stayed monogamous because that was a big old fat lie that was probably the first lie I ever said was that I was going to be a, a monogamous stitcher <laughs> I was so cute and naive back then Oh, so little did I know. I said the same thing about knitting. Oh, I'm only going to stitch one sock at a time. Who the heck am I? Like, really? Did I really think I was only going to knit one sock at a time? Did I really think I was only going to stitch one project at a time? I'm a freaking multi-crafter, and I know this. Oh, and my nose. My nose. Why? Why is it? Every time you hit record... The nose starts going all crazy. I feel like I have to sneeze, but I'm trying not to. It's fine. Are we still in frame? Okay. Trying not to sneeze. Need to go through and vacuum my vents. I think that would help. Because the kids sneeze all the time too. It's really funny. It's especially in the morning. Oh, it's so funny. It's like they have their own conversation in sneezes. In there, three, so I'm gonna do two here and come back. Oop. There we go. See, and the almost sneeze made me forget what we were talking about. And this is what happens. This is why I call this my world of crazy because this is where I literally get to just let my brain go and do its thing and wear itself out so that I might be able to sleep some point tonight. It just goes, it just goes really need to make tags. Maybe I'll have the husband print out some tags for me and I'll just have them ready to go. But if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer as long as, you know, they're with, within means. None of that inappropriate stuffs. But I would love to do Q&A. Not quite sure how helpful I'll be or how on track I'll be able to stay, but I'll do my best. I think we were talking about monogamous. Is that what we were talking about? Thought I was only going to do one sock. So, yeah, one sock each pair. Because now that I've shown, again, on the floss tubes, I showed a lovely gift that I received, which were two nine inch circular needles. Uh, you best believe I'm going to be putting on some uh, scarlet socks on there. I'm starting up one of them. Yes, I need to find out if she wants long ones or short ones because she can never seem to make up her mind. Maybe I'll just make her one of both. And then she can decide. That would be really funny. Could you imagine if I made her one short sock and one tall sock, but both the same sock? Does that even make sense at all? So she would wear them as a pair? She's, she's at that age where one second she loves and adores something, and the next minute it's, oh, that was totally not my favorite thing. <sighs> I've raised two girls already. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. I'm not ready. not ready and then i only have one son so this everything he's going through is all news to me because i have no idea the, the body changes and the we just did health checkups with both of them and doc was like yep they're both pre-puberty and i'm like yeah you want them i'll take them back when you're done no dang it try it i was giving them out for free no no takers 
I appreciate the fact that my kids are, are on, on the average, really good kids. They are. They drive me bonkers every once in a while, and they love, love to drive each other bonkers on the daily. But, on the overall, they are really, really good kids. So, Scarlett's talking about how they're trying to build up a website for her anti-bullying. Uh, I think they're, they were discussing trying to make it an elective. Not quite sure how that would work. But... I don't know, she's back on her anti-bullying campaign, and I'm, of course, 110% supportive. And she's got a bunch of her friends that are joining in with her, and I feel like we need to get her uh, VP back involved. Although, with her doing the online schooling thing, I'm not quite sure how that'll work. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, she's super excited. She got confirmed that her band will continue. She's in band, I should say. She plays trumpet. Um, will continue, even though she's doing online distance learning. And the rest of her school is going back. And then my son is still trying to figure out if ASL is going to be an option for him. We're still not sure about that. And we're not sure about the whole uh, virtual learning thing yet. Because they were supposed to email all teachers as a Friday. Today is Sunday. Um, like what the curriculum is going to be. Who the teachers are. What to expect. What the schedules are going to look like. Yada, yada, yada. The whole nine. Because they already kind of gave us a, you know, a, a fair warning that, hey, what you've been doing, you know as of right now, is not going to be the same routine and regimen that you're going to do when you are a virtual, in the virtual academy. And so all information was supposed to be passed out to parents via email, obviously, on the 18th of September. They have now extended it to October 2nd because the kids go back October 5th. So do you remember way back, you know, in like July, August, where we couldn't figure out if the kids were starting school on July 22nd or August 17th? or vice versa. No, no, no. I had it right this time. I had it right. July 22nd or August 17th. We weren't sure what was going on and all the things. And then we found out the Friday before, hey, they're starting out July 17th. So be ready. And everybody was scrambling around. I kind of feel like we're doing that again. Kind of. Like my kids are supposed to be going back October 5th. Maybe. Depends on if we hear anything by October 2nd. Maybe. So... I think what this year has taught me more than anything, and I've, I've always been more of a go with the flow type of person, but this has definitely taught me to go with the flow and don't stress because stressing out about it does absolutely nothing for me except me, except make me, you know, more white haired and bald. So I'm learning to just go with the flow and just trying to teach my kids, you know what, these are uncertain times. Nobody really knows what's going on. You are not alone in the questioning of what the heck is happening. So, it's going to be interesting. That's all, I, that's all I can tell myself. It's all I can prepare myself for mentally and emotionally is just, we're just going to keep it interesting. And it's fine. Everything's going to be fine. We will all survive. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Some days it's very questionable with the kiddos. Maybe seems to be the word of the year. It was focus. In January, my word was focus. I think it is now switched to maybe. I think everything is just on the maybe side. And it's just got to be okay. It's just, eh, you know. Got to learn how to accept it. For those who don't know, I do live in Arizona, so my numbers are a little haywire. And we have some fires nowhere near us, so we're not, like, overly concerned. But, you know, some of the state is on fire, which seems to be the thing right now on the West Coast. Like, everybody wants to join that party. I don't know why, but there's that. But I think things are starting to calm down a little bit. I think I saw that some fires are finally being able to be put out. Um, I do know I have a friend of mine. I will not use her name here. I just spoke about that on my floss tube. About how if you send me something, or you leave me a comment, or yada yada yada, I'm going to use your name. I'm going to use your floss tube name. So, I don't know why I thought I wouldn't name drop people, because I do all the time. Because <laughs> y'all are my friends. Like, let's just, let's just be real here. That one, that one. So this one was done. I'm going to come back up here. And so I know when I'm talking to my friends and there's a group of people and we're all chit-chatting together, I say someone's name to get their attention. Well, it's kind of like in Floss Tube or Stitch With Me's. I'm going to say the name. But this time I will keep it discreet because I know um, she, and, or she and her family are going through quite a bit. And I'm a little concerned. 
and I'm, I'm trying not to be that overbearing person who like checks in every five minutes just to know that the person is okay. If she wants to reach out, she's more than welcome to reach out to me and let me know that she's doing all right. Um, but I know that she and her family and her daughter, who's an adult, I believe, I would assume, because I don't think they live in the same household. Um, they've all had to evacuate and she's terrified that, you know, she's, she's not going to have a home to come back to. And so, um, I will say that she does live in California just so you can kind of get in a general idea, but she texted that to me mm, last week. We well, text Facebook message. I can't remember. I have way too many ways to, to reach out to people, but, um, so I've been worried about her and thinking about her a lot and just, I'm just hoping that she's okay. And that most importantly that her and her family are doing okay. I know she said something about the red cross, which can, I mean, that's just one step closer to it being reality instead of just being a, you know, a scare and we had to leave, but luckily it didn't actually hit and we're okay type situation. So, and then, you know, you've got friggin' everywhere else on the other side. It's like trying to drown. I don't know what's going on. Some people are getting snow already. I think my husband's dad was talking about how, uh, my father-in-law, I guess I should say, um, was talking about how they were like, you know, like 94 and now they're at 36. It's insane. It's insane how people's weather just changes literally in a blink of an eye. We're just super excited that we went from 115 for like weeks on end. And I think our high today was 104. That is the signal of fall, people. That's it right there. It's 104. <sighs> it's still hot. It's still hot, but it's, it's fine. It's so much better than 115, let me tell you. And yes, there is a major difference. You can feel it. If you open the door when it's 115, your lungs shrivel. They just shrivel. And they, like, stop existing. It's 104, you can still breathe. It's a little hazy, but you can still breathe. So, and I think it's, it's been crazy because, you know, obviously everyone's cooped up at home. Well, I mean, for those of us who listen, um all cooped up at home doing what we're supposed to be doing. We've been staying in the air conditioning in like 80 degree temperature and it's been wonderful and nice. And we forgot what it's like to actually live in Arizona temporarily. Cause as soon as you go outside, you get a slap in the face of a reminder of, yep, this is where you are. It's hot. It's hot. So I love the fact that I get to listen to other people talk about you know, that their leaves are changing and the season is changing and fall is right around the corner. And I'm like, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're, we're not there. We're, we're getting closer. Fall has not happened yet. Not yet. But it's okay. Oh my gosh. And all the things that I want to stitch next year because that stupid Readly app. I sound very angry with it, but I'm not. I promise. I just sound very angry with my Readly app because they just have so many doggone cute freaking patterns that I want to do. And I need smalls. I mean, with all the big old starts that I've got going next year, I need a couple of smalls, right? Like 50 of them. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. The husband went through and very generously found the photo that I was trying to talk about in my floss tube and my stitch with me last week. And <laughs> ah, he, he found the pictures and he was able to screenshot them so that way he could put them on the screen and you guys could see what I was talking about with the the geisha and the samurai and he's like babe i went into the app and i signed in it signed in signed in as you holy cow say that 10 times fast um or don't say it at all because it's tongue twister signed in as you and was scrolling through to find these pictures that you were talking about and he's like i just kept scrolling and scrolling and then i scrolled some more and then I kept scrolling and I kept scrolling and I'm like, yeah, I know. I just bookmarked everything that I thought I might like. That doesn't mean I'm going to stitch everything. It just means that I liked them enough that I didn't want to have to go back to try to look for them in the mat. He's like, no, no, you have a problem. I'm like, I know. <sighs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's fine. It's a good problem to have. It could be way worse. I'm just saying. Could be worse. And yes, I am totally naive enough to believe that I will finish all these projects in my lifetime. As long as I don't add anything else, right? Maybe next year we'll have to be a no buy year. Oof, I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. Now I have witnesses. I didn't say it was going to happen. I said it could. I said it could. Don't let the husband hear that. Although he does the edits, so he's probably already heard it. 
too late. It's fine. Okay, this is the part I hate. I have to figure out where I'm at. Do, do, do. Am I here? This? Yep. So, yeah, maybe next year will be a, a slow down on the buying type situation. Which I, I feel like I could totally accomplish. I mean, I did a no new starts so far. I still have, what, three months? October, November, December? And am I, do I, am I straight? I don't know what's happening. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think next year, I don't, I'm not, I don't think I could do the whole, um, what is that called? Stitch from stash where you only get like $25 to budget or whatever. Well, maybe I could. No, maybe. Nah, I don't know. See, these are the battles that I have. Do you see this? Did you hear what just happened? When you argue with yourself and lose both ways, you have a problem. And I totally just lost both ways. Just, it just happened. Whole point is, I think that I can go, because the if you have a subscription before you start, it doesn't count, I guess, is the rules. I don't know what the actual rules are. And then, you know, you earn money by doing finishes and all that stuff. My whole thing is, is I don't really want to have to buy anything, except for possibly DMC. Like, I could see that being something I desperately need. But for the most part, all of my fabrics were purchased this year for all the all the big ass projects. Until I add those two more in, I'll have to recalculate um, where I'm at with those. But um, I, yeah, I just I don't think I need to purchase that much next year. I think all my purchasing was done this year, and I can't I can't promise it like I did this year with the whole new new star. I was able to stick with that one. That one was easy ish. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying there's not going to be anything I'm not going to buy next year. Like, obviously. There's going to be patterns and there's going to be, you know, certain things that I'm just going to have to add to my, my list of things that I want to do. But I just don't think it's going to be that big of a spend a year. I don't think haul is going to be that much. Like this year, honestly, in all my years of crafting, this year by far was my largest spend ever on stash or haul, whichever you prefer to call it. So I think next year I'll go back to normal and everything will be fine and we'll just have stitchy fun and stitch all the things. So where are we at time-wise? Okay, I think maybe I'm going to finish this floss and uh, see how many stitches I got in since I'm using Pattern Keeper, is going to get well used next year by like a lot, a lot. I think 50%, I think I'm lucky enough to say that 50% of my patterns next year are all on Pattern Keeper, which is fantastic because without Pattern Keeper, I would not be doing what I have planned next year. It just would not be a thing. Nope, mm-mm, would not happen. Okay, let me go. So there's those two, jump up, do one. Come on, little buddy, you can do it. My poor little needle with the ball on the edge of it is getting rusty, and it's probably time to retire this one and switch it out for a new one, even though I don't want to. They tarnish super easy. Well, for me, they do. Not, I know not for everybody, but. And kind of hoping that my 28 double pointed needles are coming sometime soon. I ordered them from Amazon. Kind of hoping those don't get lost because I would really like to try those. The 24s that I got uh, from my friend Amanda, she found them in a like a grab bag that she got from her local ONS and she was kind enough to send them to me to let me try them out. And I love the concept of them. Problem I think is, is that it's 24 and I'm doing 18 count Ada and I think it's too thick. So when I pull through, um, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, it tears my floss super fast. And I'm well aware I use extremely long lengths, but it just, it, it eats it up, tears it right in half. So I'm hoping that the 28s will be a little bit easier to work with. Mm, did I stitch that in the wrong spot? There's those four, there's that one. Nope, I was looking in the wrong spot again, okay. That happens to me a lot, especially during these checkerboard patterns. Oh. But yeah, 
yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe with the 28s I will have more success. Because I thought maybe with the 24s it would work better because, you know, it makes the hole bigger. But I really have to tug to get the eye of the needle through the hole. So I just think they're a hair too big. And 28s might be too small. So I might end up ordering some 26s. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Oh dear. Here we go. I still can't believe we got through all those Harry Potters in one day. That was a whole lot. That was a whole lot of information to take in. Let me just tell you. Pretty sure we're like the last ones to see Harry Potter all the way through. Just saying. But it's fine. But yeah. I think my youngest one is now obsessed with all things the Harry Potter. Which is fine because luckily for me I have patterns that I plan to do. She's probably going to claim them and want them in a room though. They're supposed to go on the movie wall. I don't know how that's going to work. I have a feeling she's going to fight me for them. Even though I did them. I mean, I'm just saying. I have a feeling she's going to fight me for them. I was trying to think if I had any other questions this week. I know one of the questions was what fabric am I using? And this one, like I said, um, I think I said it here because I can't remember, is um, 18 Count Easy Guide Ada. And I actually ordered mine from Heaven and Earth. Um, the first two Heaven and Earth designs that I purchased was uh, Dragonkin, which is this one here, and Mother of Dragon, which is the one I worked on last week. Um, I did purchase full kits. So pattern, floss, fabric, the whole kit and caboodle from them. And then after that realized, you know what, it might be easier and cheaper for me to just, it's great having them kit it all up for you do not get me wrong i'm so glad that i did it twice um because if you can afford it that is definitely the way to go it sucks having to kit these up and trying to hope and pray that the store that you're going to has everything that you need to um i hear cabinets now slamming not quite sure what's happening there i don't think my children are doing dishes we haven't eaten dinner yet anyways um this might look a little confusing to some. This is how I jump and come back. Anyways, sorry, thought I should clarify. Um, but yeah, the whole trying to find, you know, 25 skeins of one color because it's a, a very well used color in a chart is just uh, not my thing. Oh, did he text me? Is that what happened? What time is it? Please hold. He might have, I don't know. I don't want to touch it because if I touch it, then it's going to stop and then think it's fine. I told him to text me when he was ready for uh, dinner because I usually go and I help. I do not cook. I'm, I assist. I assist. But um, yeah, so for me, it's just, it's financially, it's better for me to go through and I have a full kit of DMC or a full set, not a full kit, a full set of DMC. And so I just replace as needed. Hopefully what you just saw me do makes sense. I'm coming back now full circle. So now I'm gonna come back and jump down here. I don't know if anybody else does this. Again, my, my brain is very, it does its own thing when I'm stitching. I try really hard not to focus on it and concentrate too hard on it. I just let my, my hand do its thing. I don't wanna have to overthink my hobby. So sometimes it makes sense when I do things and sometimes it's like, what the heck did you just do that for? Don't worry, I ask myself that question all the time. All the freaking time. But it's okay. It's all right. Okay, I think I'm gonna do these four right here and then I'm gonna call it quits and see what the heck they're banging around downstairs for. Because again, not quite six o'clock. So I don't know if we're prepping for dinner without me, with me, I don't know. I just live here. Y'all, I just live here. Okay, let me do this one and go underneath. Wah, and there. So, in my last video, I totally zoomed in and let you guys see really super up close what was going on. This time I'm a little further back, but 
you know, I'll try to alternate, go back and forth and all that stuff. Um, oh shoot and caboodle. It's 65 minutes or 65. What? Who? Uh, no, 55. Cause I can read numbers. Kind of. Um, I forgot to mention it in the beginning. I remembered in the floss tube this time. I forgot totally in the stitch with me, but the hubby did add a link to the bottom called buy me a coffee. So if you're interested in doing that, please do so. And I totally appreciate it. It is not required. Totally not necessary. Does not change a thing on my channel, um, but it does allow you to support just a little bit if you choose to, um, to help me keep going with this channel and creations and all the fun things because holy crap, there's a lot coming next year. And I have a feeling I'm going to have to buy every store out of DMC. Just saying it's a thing. Um, on that note, I'm going to bid you adieu, say farewell, stay random, don't kiss projects, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!